Uh, we are back with uh, Jerry Crispin, um, now um, really a father of the Canada Experience Awards, as we have uh, seen in the last interview, and um, not even the awards, but the Canada Experience. And I really like your um, um, motto, I think, uh, the lifelong student of uh, recruitment, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so it's a very nice uh, motto. Um, so based on uh, your experience, uh, with five years uh, Kenya Experience Awards in the US or in Canada, uh, how would you assess the current status of the Kenya Experience um, in general? I think we're slowly moving the needle, Wolfgang. Mm -hmm. um, we are slowly, we're slowly making people much more aware. The use of The phrase candidate experience is just becoming much more popular, but in order to prevent it from being a cliche, the critical issue is applying data. And so whenever I see someone using those, uh, those terms or talking about the five things that are most important in candidate experience, I'm, I'm compelled to send them data, send them information <laughs> that allows them to see what they can support. And those things we still have to uh, determine um, are actually connected to uh, treating candidates well. Okay, so you're, it's empirically based uh, that you would, uh, the data that you would like. So you see it, so we're moving a little bit ahead and um, the current status, if we come like uh, from one to 10, 10 is the best, uh, what the ideal and one is, uh, yeah, you know, uh, where would you uh, put it? I put it probably about a four or five. Four or five. So it's a long yes. way to go, just in the middle. And I think uh, there are companies who are close to ten. Okay. But I but I think there's there are a few only a few of them, and more of them in fact are participating in the candidate experience awards. Okay. Would you would you um, be able to give some best ex ex best practice examples uh, for, out of those? Oh, without a doubt. So, so let me tell you a couple things. So a company uh, like uh, Capital One, for example, mm -hmm. is doing one of the, uh, the best jobs in terms of being able to hold their recruiters accountable for the treatment of candidates and measuring that in a, a broad way. Mm -hmm. When they, when they uh, close each job that, it's fi that is filled, they inform everybody who has applied, and three days after, After that, they ask them to answer 16 questions about the experience that they had. Some of mm -hmm. those questions are derived from the Candidate Experience Awards, but they do this for every single job for all of the candidates. Mm -hmm. They ask 10,000 a month. What is the response rate on the 10,000? 80%. 80%. Well, that's quite impressive. 80%. So it uh, looks like that uh, candidates like to be asked and give their um, assessment. Oh, and we see that in the Candidate Experience Awards. It is not unusual for us when we have uh, the few questions in which we say to the candidate, if you want to expand on this, you know, we offer you the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. even though we think we've asked them every question and provided every answer. And it's not unusual for us to have tens of thousands of candidates write extraordinary missives. We still haven't figured out how to assess that text response mm -hmm. yet. Okay. But we'll get there. Just too big okay. a data. Okay, interesting. So that's the uh, the uh, status of the candidate experience right now. Where do you still see improvement areas? Um, a number of them. I, I think one of the things that in science we want to be able to do is replicate. So what we can now show over a four-year period or begin to show uh, as we develop stable questions that we know are giving us good, reliable uh, information is we can show that uh, some things are replicating themselves and in their connection to the Candidate Experience Awards. For example, there is a uh, theory about perceived fairness that um, is highly connected to how a candidate will rate you. 